Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Ilnaz Niksaresh. Um, I am presenting my project, which is called Data Visualization of Graph-Based Threat Detection System from University of Victoria. Uh, my supervisors were Dr. Amirali Beni Asadi and Dr. Isa Traore, uh, both from University of Victoria. Okay, in the outline, we're gonna give a brief introduction on what is the background, what is the need for data visualization in uh, threat detection based systems and what is the AEN graph, what does it do, uh, what does it stand for? And um, next, I would go to the implementation of the visualization model that I have developed and uh, different layers that it consists of. It uh, basically has got uh, four different layers, namely element type, node age layer, probability of compromise, and then the threat horizon layer. And after that, I'm going to go through the experimental evaluation conclusion and then the future work okay so as the introduction we all uh, know that the data and the amount of data in uh, computer networks including uh, computer security networks is just growing exponentially so with that exponential growth there is always a a uh, great uh, need and demand for visualization tools in order to help the data analysts uh, either uh, they are like the security analysts or uh, data analysts to just uh, tackle the huge amount of raw, raw data and then uh, enable them to have some kind of insight into it. So these visualization tools, uh, they actually help avoid having to spend extra time um, on anal uh, analysis of raw data. And um, it basically allows uh, the security analysts to distinguish unusual patterns or any kind of anomalies which may exist uh, in the system. Okay, so um, basically, Shira VAL, they have reviewed all the network security uh, visualization practices that were already been developed in the uh, history uh, by classifying them into five different classes. The first one is the host and server monitoring. The second one is the internal external monitoring. The third one is the port activity. Uh, the fourth one is the family of attack patterns and then the routing behavior. So next we're going to talk about like what each one of these um, visualization classes are uh, focusing on. Okay, the first one is the host and server monitoring. It basically uh, shows the nodes in the networks as either hosts or servers. And uh, it, it is just uh, trying to identify uh, any possible correlation between these two uh, nodes, I mean, the hosts and servers. And uh, with that, that uh, identification is just trying to detect the malicious uh, nodes. And this is like one of the earliest uh, works that was done on small sized networks. And um, they placed the monitored server in the middle of the visualization layer, as can be seen here. And the rest of the hosts are around five uh, concentric uh, circles, as shown here. And uh, there were uh, and then uh, each node's ring defines a distinct IP address from that of its uh, monitored server. Next is the internal external uh, monitoring. It is basically trying to identify the internal uh, and external uh, nodes in the network. Uh, it's related to the communication of internal hosts, which are shown as discrete and the external uh, IPs and the external IPs, which are shown as the yellow grids. And uh, this system is basically called Visual, and it is a security visualization system which is developed to permit the analyst to observe the interaction between 
an internal network and its external uh, sources. Next is the port activity class. Uh, this class has been designed to highlight the uh, viruses, trojans, worms, and zero-day exploit activities by monitoring the port uh, activities. In the developers of this visualization class, actually they believe that with the scaling techniques implemented due to the amount of traffic and extended range of possible port numbers and IP addresses, the malicious actors can be located. So uh, this is also one of the uh, earlier visualization systems which was uh, designed and um, it's a, basically a port based overview of network activity uh, that is presented with this stacked histograms of aggregated port uh, activity. So uh, the authors of this work also believe that the port activity can be used to detect the zero day exploits that are not detectable by conventional methods. Next family is the attack patterns. So uh, visualizations of this class is actually uh, helping an administrator in not only detecting the attacks, but also uh, to display the different steps of the attacks. As we may already know, uh, there are different steps in each attack. Uh, uh, like the first phase usually starts with the reconnaissance and then it, it is followed by scanning, acquiring access to the uh, open pores, and then finally uh, clearing tracks and installing backdoors for future access. So visualizations of this class is basically uh, helping the analysts in displaying all these phases. And um, they are uh, using sorry they are using this uh, uh, algorithm uh, in order to develop a visualization system that is uh, trying to detect any anomaly and intrusive behaviors inside a network so uh, by incorporating a self-organizing map or as it is called uh, some, uh, they are trying to reduce the dimensionality of the network space. And uh, they are using, uh, they are doing this by the unsupervised machine learning algorithm to a two dimensional color map representative of the state of network. So the system uh, which is being depicted, uh, depicted here in, in this picture, uh, is having like the network state and deviations from the normal behavior uh, by using the front and background colors, size and relevant positioning on a map. So uh, in this way, similar events are grouped together and the map is also arranged in the same way. So it is easier for the uh, analysts to understand what is going on in the network. Okay, another family is uh, the routing behavior, and it's just focusing on the BGP uh, routing protocol or the border gateway protocol. And um, it's just considering the internet traffic uh, disruptions due to router misconfigurations or malicious attacks. So uh, we already know that the BGP has got uh, many disadvantages including like distributed nature and shortage of validity confirmation of announcement which is also an act or acknowledgement uh, message so it increases its vulnerability towards the security attacks so the ability to detect and correct disruptions in internet traffic caused by router misconfigurations or malicious attacks is what is considered uh, in this uh, algorithm and the system incorporates animation to show how the routing behavior changes over time so that it can help the network administrator, uh, administrators in identifying the anomaly uh, in the network. Okay, um, now we are going to talk about the um, AEN graph. AEN is actually short for activity and event network, which is a model uh, that we have 
previously developed in University of Victoria, and it's a new framework for threat modeling, detection, and investigation. It's a multigraph with a variety of nodes and edges. As you can see, uh, it's just growing to be bigger and bigger as the network uh, grows. And it processes a wide variety of logs, for example, network traffic files, system logs, DNS data, and based on all these uh, data and logs input to the system, it builds and maintains a graphical model of the network uh, behavior. Okay, as we already saw in the previous uh, graph, uh, the AEN graph uh, has got uh, two main components. There are nodes and edges. So nodes uh, represent the vertices in the graph engine and every node element has an ID label and properties field. And uh, But the values corresponding to these properties might vary depending on the type of label associated. So as you can see here, the ID is uh, unique to each um, node. The label here is alert. And uh, the protocol used is a TCP, source port, destination port, source IP, and many other information. And then we've got the edges, which represent the links in the data. And they are uh, basically connecting the nodes. And the elements, which are uh, the edge, uh, they also have an ID label and corresponding properties. So the label can be a session, properties can be malicious label, destination size is how much, protocol, source port, destination port, and other information. Okay, so in the implementation of the visualization model, uh, we have uh, considered that uh, there are so many challenges in order to extract meaningful um, information out of the uh, raw data for security admin admins. And that's why we have thought of uh, developing a visualization model uh, for our AEN graph. So um, this is what I have developed, the node view tab, and it has got um, different uh, different parts that we will uh, discuss like in later uh, slides. Okay, the first layer that is uh, developed is called the element type layer. And um, initially when the graph, uh, when the, uh, basically when the traffic, when the network traffic uh, files are input to the system, there is one graph as shown here is being developed by the system. But then how uh, it's being uh, represented is different. Like initially, uh, this is uh, the original form of the AEN graph. As you can see, the nodes are having like different sizes and uh, by clicking on the show and hide uh, labels, uh, we are uh, pursuing two uh, goals. One is just removing the labels on each of the uh, nodes in the zoom out view, and also making all the nodes of the same size as of circles. So this was with the labels in the zoom in view, like initially the uh, graph is being shown as like this, but then after we uh, hide the uh, labels and just make the uh, node size like similar for all the nodes, it would be like this as seen in the previous slide. Okay, so in the element type layer, we also focus on the nodes and the edges. But what we have done for the nodes is that we already know that uh, the AEN graph is including like different nodes and edges. Uh, and also we know that each node has got different labels such as it could either be host domain alert ip organization and location that provide the relative information to those nodes for us so upon selecting each type we can see the nodes belonging to that specific category with a specific color like for example uh, the hosts are actually shown as blue and the domain is shown in other like i think it's it's the green one um, in other colors. 
And we have done the same thing for the edges. So different types of edges that we have, uh, have got like different uh, labels, like authentication attempt, IP located at part of controls. These are all the attributes which are giving us some information about these edges. So upon selection of these edges, the user would again observe them in color and the rest of the network elements are shown in gray. So in this way, uh, the admin can have a better view of what he's looking for um, in the network. Okay, so the next part of the element type layer is the malicious property. So the malicious uh, nodes are basically, uh, uh, they have been computed in the back end and uh, based on the algorithm, uh, they will be sent to the front end and after, uh, being received in the front end, they are uh, just passed to this um, function that we have written, and it's just making them uh, all in red color. So malicious nodes are highlighted in red uh, when selecting that malicious property uh, checkbox. And only hosts can be malicious. So the malicious property is only apl uh, being applied to the host nodes. And uh, so in conclusion for the element type layer, the discussed uh, layers that have been developed in this element type layer, uh, they provide the ability to show and hide all the labels and all or some of the network elements based on their node type or edge type or node property in color. Okay, so what we have thought about is to be able to implement these different layers uh, to operate together so that we can see like different properties uh, being uh, selected at the same time and uh, we can have them like all together. So this is like with the labels, like the show labels is uh, on and the labels are also being shown and all the nodes and edges are also being uh, like with different distinct colors that they have. And here it's like without the labels. So we said that when, when we deselect this uh, checkbox, it's just uh, giving us the zoom out view, like all the nodes are of the same size, they are circled and then there is no label on it, any of them. Next, we have the uh, node edge layer. Uh, the functionality provided by this layer is mainly concerning the age of each node in the network. So what we have thought is that like the analysts are always uh, interested to know which nodes are uh, being added like recently. And uh, for that, we have uh, just developed this opacity feature. And uh, this opacity is... Uh, having a value between zero and one and what it does is that if the node age is like uh, 10 days or less than 10 days meaning that the node has been added like uh, in the time period of 10 days from now uh, it can be just having different opacities and as you can see like uh if for example the node has been added like uh yesterday it would be 0 0.9 so it could be like having higher opacity and if it is added like nine days ago it would be 0 0.1 so it would have like less opacity Next, we have the probability of compromise uh, layer. This layer also illustrates the nodes based on their probability of being compromised. So uh, again, this probability of compromise is a value which is being uh, sent from the back end to the front end. And um, based on this uh, formula, uh, we have uh, just given different sizes based on the probability of being compromised. Like for example, if the probability of being compromised is like bigger, then the size would be bigger. If the probability of being compromised is smaller, then the size of uh, those nodes would be smaller. And also it is uh, noticeable that the probability of compromise layer is only implemented on the hosts, not on the other nodes. 
And then we have got, uh, as a final layer, we have got the threat horizon layer. So uh, in this layer, we basically um, said that like, if a node is considered to be malicious, if uh, it was uh, noted as malicious itself, or it has been uh, triggered by the nodes, uh, by the other nodes which are which have been malicious it in the vicinity of this node so also again the only host nodes can be uh, can have threat horizons and uh, as as can be seen here again it's it's just defined as a set of all possible nodes with which a node u could have exchanged data so as a result, the data exchange ultimately affected both of them, directly or indirectly. Okay, so since the threat horizon layer uses orange color to distinguish the nodes that have been in direct or indirect contact with the focal points, and the focal point is, is the node which is uh, suspicious to be uh, to be malicious, and uh, it is not compatible with the node type layer and it's only comp compatible with the probability and the node age layers. So therefore, upon selecting the thread horizon layer, all the node types and edge types uh, are disabled because this is also shown in color. So we cannot have two different and distinct functions uh, working based on color at the same time, which, which makes sense. And uh, for the experimental, evaluation, uh, the response time and the CPU utilization are basically used to evaluate the performance of the AEN graph visualization layers. We have used uh, different sizes of stored alert and the NetFlow files, which are uh, basically the raw data files from the networks uh, being input to this uh, graph detection system to determine the size of the graph. So SNORT is one of the IDS uh, used among the data sources and NetFlow are aggregate packets, also part of the data sources. And the evaluation was run on a uh, Dell uh, laptop Core i7 and six, with 16 gigabyte of memory. And uh, the response time and the CPU utilization are both studied to measure the scalability of the developed layers. And each file is input into the system five times and the average output values are computed for the response time and the CPU utilization. Uh, the response time is uh, basically the time duration over which the graph is loaded to the system and the time the graph appears on the canvas. So the average response time is measured in terms of seconds. And for the CPU utilization, it indicates a computer's processing resources or the volume of work handled by a CPU. So the actual CPU utilization differs uh, based on the amount and type of managed computing tasks. A specific tasks uh, basically require heavy CPU time, while others uh, require less because of non-CPU uh, uh, resource requirements. And the CPU utilization is measured in terms of milliseconds. So uh, here, these two um, figures basically depict the response time of different sized snort alert and netflow log files fed to the system before the activation of visualization layers. As observed in the graphs, uh, the response time increased as the file size also increased. So to handle larger capacity, more computation power would be required, like by using powerful server machines on the cloud or uh, yeah, or that. So the same experiment was again conducted with the visualization layers to be able to compare the performance before and after the visualization layers activation. Uh, so as, as can be seen in these two pictures, the response time has changed in terms of like two milliseconds, as can be seen here, to 12 seconds, as can be seen here. Uh, depending on the file sizes compared to before, which can be interpreted as the hardware limitations. Uh, 
And furthermore, the same experiment has been run on networks of different sizes to measure the CPU utilization of the system. As expected, the system utilization increases with the size of the network. For the files less than 100 kilobyte, the CPU utilization was acceptable. But as the size of files uh, grows to 194 kilobyte uh, that contains hundreds of nodes, the system utilization also increases to more than 100%. As mentioned before, the system on which the experiment is conducted is a multi-core computer where the CPU performs significantly better than a single core uh, CPU of the same speed. And multiple cores not only allow PCs to run multiple processes simultaneously with greater ease and in increasing the performance when multitasking, but also provides the uh, possibility to have more than 100% utilization depending on the number of cores available on the system. So again, as mentioned above, it is uh, recommended to use computers with higher configuration capabilities uh, to be able to load higher uh, data rates and fully utilize the features provided by the AEN system uh, model. Okay, as the conclusion, uh, before implementing these visualization layers, uh, the AEN graph uh, model did not explicitly represent the nodes and edges that might be of interest to the security analysts. And uh, with the help of the visualization layers, basically analysts can view the elements of interest in different colors, shapes, uh, and sizes than the rest of the nodes in the network. And it enables the analysts to save time by not investigating uh, raw data, especially as the graph model is designed to be continually growing and continually being uh, enlarged. And the layers can be used uh, individually or as sets. And uh, it is basically, we think that yeah, uh, we believe that to handle layer cap larger capacity, uh, more computation power should be required, like by using powerful server machines on the cloud. As a future work, um, the system performance can be enhanced by attack uh, progression visualization. So the goal of this feature is to make it easier for an analyst to view how an attack progress through time. Uh, which means that once an alert is generated, either via the IDS or via one of our detectors, the system should identify and highlight an attack path by using data from the alerts, threat horizon, etc. And by using the graph timeline feature, it can correlate the attack path with the graph elements in previous and future points in time and display the attack progression from the first element to its current one. So this progression can um, be understood as a series of uh, subgraphs or attack paths that show the attack as it progresses through time. Here are references, and I would be happy to answer any questions if there.